I'm the only sleep doctor in the universe that says it's okay to sleep with the television on. The reason, because most people don't actually watch the TV, they listen to it. Hi, I'm Dr. Michael Bruce, the sleep doctor. You might recognize me from national television shows like Dr. Oz, Rachel Ray, or The Today Show, or hopefully from one of my several books, either Good Night, The Sleep Doctor's Diet, or The Power of When. Today, I'm gonna be answering popular questions about sleep from the internet. Can I catch up on sleep on the weekends? If you sleep later, what ends up happening is your entire biological clock begins to shift and you get what's called social jet lag. So if you stay up late on Friday and sleep in on Saturday, stay up late on Saturday and sleep in on Sunday, Sunday night sucks because basically your body wants to stay up late and Monday is really bad because you wanna sleep in. Can taking naps help me feel less tired? Absolutely. One of the things that we know about napping is it's actually a really great way to make up for a little bit of extra sleep that might have been lost the night before. But a word to the wise, if you have a problem falling asleep or staying asleep, napping is not your friend because it reduces sleep drive and makes it even more difficult to get a good night's sleep. Is there a way to stop being a light sleeper? Basically, no. It turns out that this is a genetic finding. It's called temperament. And we now know that some people are just born light sleepers. This is why many people have to use things like earplugs, eye shades, sound machines, all of those things that we see in somebody's environment, especially if they're already a genetically light sleeper. So this is gonna sound crazy, but I use it personally and it works really, really well. People count backwards from 300 by threes. So 300, 297, 294. Mathematically, it's so complicated, you can't think of anything else, and it's so damn boring, you're out like a light. Here's a good one. Do I really need to stop using my phone before bed? Let me be honest with you, I'm one of the only sleep doctors in the universe that says it's okay to watch television before bed, but phones are definitely a no-no. Blue light is actually emitted from your phone. Blue light is bad because it turns off melatonin. Not a good thing. Give yourself an electronic curfew of about 60 minutes before bed where you're not using a phone, laptop, or an iPad. Is there any risk of taking melatonin regularly? Very, very few people have a melatonin deficiency. Unless you get into the upper age ranges like 55, 65, 75, where we do have a tendency to see melatonin begin to decline a bit, generally speaking, nobody should need melatonin on a daily basis. One of my favorite questions is how do I sleep on an airplane? Choosing your seat wisely has everything to do with this. Personally, I try to stay away from the galley or the lavatory because that's where people have a tendency to congregate and it can get pretty noisy. I'm only 5'9", so being in a window seat works out well for me because I can put my head up against the side of the plane with my pillow and get a little rest. But if I was taller than that, then an aisle seat would probably be better. That way I could stretch my legs out and my knees wouldn't get so tight. Of course, a middle seat is probably the worst seat that you could possibly sleep in. Is there a relationship between sleep loss and weight gain? Absolutely, positively, there is. First of all, your appetite increases. The second thing that happens is your metabolism slows down, but it gets worse. You start to crave high fat, high carbohydrate foods. Let's be honest, when you're sleep deprived, what do you want? You want a Snickers or a cake, cookie, pie, something along those lines. If you're gonna go on a diet, the best thing that you can do to make your diet really work is to get a great night's sleep. So the question is, how do I sleep comfortably on the floor? You probably don't. Can you die from not getting enough sleep? You can't actually die from lack of sleep unless you fall asleep while driving a car or you have another medical complication or an undiagnosed sleep disorder. But generally speaking, people just get so damn tired, they eventually fall asleep. So one of the things that I've found when people wake up at three o'clock in the morning and they can't fall back asleep is it's due to low blood sugar. So here's a quick tip that you can use anytime you want. Take a teaspoon of raw honey about 30 minutes before bed and eat it. It keeps your blood sugar pretty stable throughout most of the night. If you don't wanna use honey, look at guava leaf tea. That's the one that will actually help keep your blood sugar stable as well. Do I really need to sleep eight hours? Everybody's sleep cycle turns out to be a little bit different. I go to bed around midnight, I wake up just about at 6.15. Everybody's sleep need is individual. So I'm probably the only sleep doctor in the universe that says, no, you do not have to sleep eight hours. My next question, should I be taking melatonin? 
Melatonin is really good for people who are experiencing jet lag. And to be fair, for some people who have a very, very late schedule, so they have a tendency not to get sleepy until two, three o'clock in the morning, these people melatonin might be very appropriate for. Why does eating before bed give me nightmares? One of the things that we know is certain foods can actually give us an upset stomach. And the way our brain translates that isn't necessarily so great in the middle of the night during a dream. So if you're eating something that gives you an upset stomach, like maybe spicy food or food that you're not necessarily used to, there is the possibility that you could have a nightmare. So the question is, how can I learn to sleep on my back? There's only a couple of ways to do this, but my favorite way, which isn't too much fun, is if you take a backpack and you throw a football in it and you wear it on the front of you, specifically if you're a stomach sleeper. This will not allow you to sleep on your stomach because of this big thing that's in front of you and will force you to sleep on your back. If you enjoyed listening to my answers about sleep-related questions, feel free to look down here in the comments and send me some more questions because I'm looking forward to answering your questions. So I help people achieve their dreams through better sleep? Like the sign? Is that, I mean, how, how would you phrase that? That's exactly how I would phrase it. Okay. <laughs> to, be, to be super honest.